Hello everybody, I'm Chris Provost. You're watching Provost Park Pass, and today I'm gonna to tell you how one interview given by a Disney executive has made the park going experience horrible. It has made it frustrating and has ruined the park going experience for Disney fans because of this one interview. But before we get into that, hit the subscribe button, hit that little bell notification, hit the like button because I we're starting new formats here at new format here at Provost Park Pass. You see lots of cool new videos. All right, let's get into this. I have done all this research, and I think I've come down to the whole reason of why the park going experience at Disneyland has, or Disney has been a little bit less, a little more frustrating. It all starts in 2019, and these are the eight points of what has happened. So let's start in 2019. I want you to go back with me and remember 2019. There were two major things that were going to be happening in the year 2019 in theme parks. One, Galaxy's Edge was going to be opening up for Disney. And number two, Hagrid's motorcycle, the, the motorcycle attraction, the, was it Hagrid's mythical tree creatures attraction? It's a great attraction, by the way. Hagrid's was going to also be opening up in 2019. It's important to note that Hagrid's opened up before Galaxy's Edge. This is important. This changed the history of our theme parks. Hagrid's opened up, and on our opening day, expectations were incredibly high as at Harry, Harry Potter World. So many people were so thrilled to attend, and they were going to attend. And the wait, at one point, got up to be 10 hours long. 10 hours long. And the ride was breaking down, but they're fixing it and keeping it going. And Universal Studios told everybody, says, hey, if you're in line, don't worry. We're going to get you on the traction. No matter how long it takes, we'll get you on traction. The line got up so long that it even went outside of the park of Universal Studios. But people were waiting. Now, here's what happened, is that the media saw that, that it was a 10-hour wait, and people were kind of freaking out uh, on, the, on the media side. It's important to understand. The media was like, 10-hour wait, 10-hour wait, 10-hour wait, 10-hour wait. Can you believe this? 10-hour wait. And they maybe it was a slow news day. I'm not exactly sure. But all the media was blasting how it was 10-hour wait. It's all that they're focusing on was a 10-hour wait. What they were not focusing on was the people's experience. The people who were waiting for 10 hours in line, when they were getting out the attractions, guess what? They were happy. They loved it. They're like, oh my gosh, that was amazing attraction they absolutely loved it now galaxy's edge i mean uh hagrid's opened up guess what was going to be opening up just a few months later galaxy's edge star wars land by two and i think disney saw all this negativity of the media like talking about 10 hour waits 10 hour waits and i they kind of i think panicked i think that they were very reactive rather than being proactive they're very reactive so disney came up with this idea part two reservations they told people, hey, if you want to go to Galaxy's Edge, you got to make a reservation to get into Galaxy's Edge. You have to make a reservation. And you make a reservation, you get a little, little QR code or whatever. When you go to that day, on opening day, you show that code, you're going to get into Galaxy's Edge. They came up with this whole idea, like, hey, nobody's going to be waiting in line. We're going to have these reservations. You get into it because the, the demand is going to be so high. Now, here's what happened. What's interesting. When Galaxy's Edge was open to all this hype. People were trying their hardest to make these reservations. They're trying to make reservations. A lot of people couldn't. They couldn't make reservations. And they're, they're frustrated. And they're like, ah, I can't, I can't get into Galaxy's Edge. Opening day came and opened up. And people went in and enjoyed Galaxy's Edge, right? They're enjoying Galaxy's Edge. And there's no line to get into Galaxy's Edge. Why was there no line? Because Disney made you get a reservation. Keep that in mind. Don't lose that train of thought. Don't forget that crucial detail, right? So, people are able to get into Galaxy's Edge, those who had reservations. Bob Chapek, okay, gave an interview after the opening Galaxy's Edge. This interview, this is what changed everything. And it really made it a really bad experience for a lot of people because of this interview. I have the interview printed here, and I want to read it verbatim so I don't, give a, I don't get it wrong. Here we go. One of the wins that we had with the opening of the original Galaxy's Edge is that we didn't have the wait. Bob Chapik, chairman of Parks Experiences and Products, said, The deep secret is we don't intend to have lines. If you build enough capacity, the rides don't go down and operates at 99% efficiency. You shouldn't have 10-hour lines. So, 10-hour lines are not a sign of success, he said. It should be seen as a sign of, frankly, failure. Bob Chapek did an interview on national news calling out Universal Studios. Now, he didn't say Universal Studios, right? He didn't say Universal Studios, but he's basically saying, if you have a brand new attraction or something open up and people have to wait 10 hours, that is frankly failure. Now, I'm just gobsmacked that this happened, right? 
Disney, he was a, he's an executive. They should know better. You don't do this. You don't set yourself up. You, why would they do this? It's, it's insane, okay? This is crazy. Now, Disney came out this, and here's what happened, is the press, the press got this, this soundbite to Bob Chapik, and they ran with it. It became, number four, a media frenzy. This media frenzy. Then all of the, everybody, blog sites, news sites, everybody was doing this. They're like, oh my gosh, Bob Chapik is throwing shade at Universal Studios. And they're talking about this 10 hour wait. And the thing is, is the at the time, the media was portraying Bob Chapik as kind of being like this awesome guy. They're like, yeah, he gets it. He gets theme parks. 10 hour wait, that's bad. Uh, Universal Studios, that was so bad for the experience. And they had, the, they had Galaxy's Edge, it opened up and there was no wait lines. Way to go, Disney. But do you know what attraction hadn't opened up yet? Rise of the Resistance. Rise of the Resistance had not yet opened up. And that's important too, because we'll come back to that in just a moment. So everybody's like saying how awesome this is. Now, here's what happened though. After Galaxy's Edge opened up, this brand new uh, land. Now the, the prior land that Disney had opened up, the newest land before that was Toontown. That was open 25 years prior to Batu, Galaxy's Edge, Star Wars land. So this is the first land that Disney has opened up in 25 years. And do you know what happened to park attendance? Number five, park attendance dipped three to 7% drop. Now Disney admits on their earnings call, they said it was a 3% drop. They, they said, yeah, park attendance did go down by 3%. Some other esti uh, experts estimate it was up to 10% or higher, double digits. We don't really know the exact because Disney is kind of cagey with those numbers, but they did, an, they did announce it says, yeah, park attendance dropped down by 3%. Bob Iger at the time, who was a CEO at the time, he said he attributed the dip be to all things other than Disney. He said it was because of hotels. Hotels were price gouging guests. They had increased, they, everybody, all the hotels knew that they're opening up a brand new Galaxy's Edge. So their prices went really high. He said like airlines, their prices went really high. And so he says that people didn't want to go. Here's the real reason, I think. People didn't want to go. They didn't want to spend money to go to Disneyland, have this brand new land open and not be able to go in. How hard would that be if you did not get a reservation and then you got little Timmy there, your little son, who's a big Star Wars fan. And he's like, dad, dad, let's go to Star Wars land. And you're like, I'm sorry, Timmy. I don't have a reservation. We can't go in. That would be a hard, difficult conversation to have as a parent. But, but dad, it's right there. It's, I can see the entrance. Yeah, we, we can't go in. But dad, it's right there. We can't go in. Why not? Because we don't have a reservation. I think a lot of families are like, whoa, they pump the brakes on that. They're like, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait until I can be sure to get in there because I don't want to spend all this money to go to a theme park and not be able to do what we want to do. And Disney had removed that choice for a lot of people. The choice has been removed. Now, do you know what attendance didn't drop? Universal Studios. <laughs> Guess what? They've got their Hagrid's ride opened up and their attendance is starting to go up. They never had this reservation system. If you want to ride Hagrid's, you just got to wait in line. There's no way around it. In fact, the universe opened up another, one of the most thrilling attractions I've ever been on, the Veloster Coaster. And guess what? Their attendance even went up again. And guess what? No reservations. Anybody can ride it. Anybody can ride it. If you're willing to wait in line, you can ride it. And Hagrid's, by the way, is one of the best roller coasters I've ever been on in my life. I love it. And Veloster Coaster is super thrilling. And if you're willing to wait in the line, then you can ride it. It doesn't matter. Anybody can write it. You just have to wait in line. Okay, so now we got to go back here to uh, 1989. Let's go back to 1989. 1989, Disney opened up Splash Mountain. It was in Critter Country. Critter Country was a was a really struggling land. They only had the, the Country Bear Jamboree and they only had uh, like a little shop there. Nobody's going there. And Michael Eisner's like, we need more people attending a park. We got to do some big things. Let's attract the teenagers. Let's make this fun or whatever. And they came up with Splash Mountain. Splash Mountain opened in 1989 and it was a huge hit. People loved it. It was awesome. And guess what? Park attendance, poof, soared through the roof. Estimates between 15 and 22%, 15, 22% park attendance increased by having one attraction. Disney had one attraction, Splash Mountain, and their park attendance went up. That's exactly what the stockholders want to see, which I'm sure Disney want to see. When Disney opened up Galaxy's Edge, their park attendance went down. Something is wrong there. There's frustrations. And we need to talk about that. That brings us to number seven, frustrations. Now, Keep in mind, remember, Bob Chapik said this, frankly, 10 hour wait is a sign of failure. It's failure. What attraction had not opened up yet in Galaxy's Edge? 
rise the resistance. Now, Galaxy's Edge is now open. Anybody can go into Galaxy's Edge. So you've got rid of those reservations for the first little while. Now, anybody going to Galaxy's Edge and getting ready to open up the biggest attraction of Galaxy's Edge, rise the resistance. Here's the problem. Disney painted themselves into a box. They put themselves in, painted themselves in a corner, I guess I meant to say, or put themselves in a box. Here's what happened. The people were super stoked. They all wanted to ride Rise of Resistance. It's supposed to be one of the best attractions that Disney has ever done. And guess what? Disney knew this. When people were going to line up, they're going to line up for maybe six, seven, eight, nine, ten hours to ride Rise of the Resistance. People were willing to do it. What's the problem with that? Here's the problem with that. Disney knew if they opened up this brand new attraction and they had an eight hour wait for it, what would you do if you were at Universal Studios? I would immediately tweet out, wow, you only got an eight hour wait on opening day? Pfft, we did 10. Or what if they had like an 11 hour wait? The Universal Studios, would, what would they do? They'd probably tweet out, oh my gosh, you have an 11 hour wait? Frankly, that's a failure. Disney couldn't win because of that interview that Bob Chapik gave Putting it down, he put the line in the sand. It says 10 hours, it's a failure. And so Disney's like, we can't, we can't have these wait lines, but you know what we can do? We could put a reservation. We'll put boarding groups, boarding groups. You got to get a boarding group to get on the attraction. Now, so you get on, you swipe your app, you get a boarding attraction at eight in the morning. And also it's like, hey, Chris, please return at 930 at night. Your boarding group, one, your boarding group. 187 and you come back. Now, I got my boarding group at eight in the morning. I don't get to go back till 9.30 at night. That's an 11 and a half hour wait. What, what is it more? Is it, was that 13 and a half hour wait or whatever? But guess what? That wait is hidden because I'm still walking in the park. I'm doing all those other things. So it doesn't look like a wait. It doesn't look like I'm waiting. Ha ha ha. So Disney is able to dodge that bullet of being made fun of by the media and especially Universal Studios. But here's the problem. I want you to rewind back to 2021. I went to Universal Studios. I was there for four days with my family. We went to Magic Kingdom. Then we went to Epcot. We were going to go to Hollywood Studios. And the last day, we were going to go to Animal Kingdom. My wife's family, they came down with me. My mother-in-law was there. My father-in-law, everybody was there. All the brothers and sisters were all there. We're all excited. Then on that Thursday, whatever day it was, we went to Hollywood Studios with the express reason to ride Rise of Resistance. None of us had been a Rise of Resistance yet. So we're so excited. We go on the app. We try to get a reservation and we can't get it. It fills up in a matter of less than a second. Can't get it. But people are like, don't worry. Again, at 2 o'clock, you can try again at 2 o'clock. So we're all standing around doing this. None of us got a reservation at 2 o'clock. Now, the next day, we were supposed to go to Animal Kingdom. But we made a decision as a family. Like, okay, you know what? Okay, it was, a, it was a fluke. It was a fluke. Let's cancel our reservation and we'll call, we canceled our reservation in Animal Kingdom and got our reservation for Hollywood Studios. So now we're going to Magic Kingdom, Epcot, Hollywood Studios, Hollywood Studios. We're not going to go to Animal Kingdom because we want to get on Rise of the Resistance. And that morning we get on, we all try again. We didn't get a reservation. We tried again at two o'clock. We didn't get a reservation. We did not write it. My mother-in-law hasn't been back really. She's like, she was so, she's like, we spent thousands of dollars to come down here to do this and you won't let me ride the attraction. I am willing to stand in line. Let me ride it. And they wouldn't let her ride it. She couldn't ride it. She's never been on it. She doesn't want to go. She's left a bitter taste in her mouth. She's upset with it. Even my wife Amanda has got now has been on the attraction. She isn't very fond of it because it's caused such a bad core memory of all that stress of trying to do this. It's a frustration that uh, people are just, they're frustrated by. They're, it's upsetting to people. Disney removed the choice to go on an attraction. They did a Guardians Galaxy causing rewind. You got to get on it. You have to get a reservation. You have to get a boarding group. They removed, the, they removed my choice as a consumer. Let me wait in line. Let me wait in line. Now, the reason I bring this up is for a whole purpose right here. Number eight, solution. Here we go. You guys are going Disney. I love you guys. You're going to have an amazing attraction opening up. Tiana's Bayou Adventure. It's going to be awesome. Please, please do not put boarding groups on this. Let anybody who wants to ride this attraction, ride this attraction. Let everybody who wants to be there on opening day, ride it. If I have to wait 12 hours to ride Tiana's Bayou Adventure, let me wait 12 hours. That is awesome. And do you know what's awesome about that? That big, huge, long line of people that you are so afraid of Disney about having, it was, frankly, is a failure. Do you know what's awesome about that line? If people are waiting in line, it's a nine-hour wait, and people are waiting in line, do you know what the rest of the park is? 
It's empty. For those people who don't want to be riding the ride, they're going to have a heyday. They're, they're going to be awesome. And the people who do want to ride the line, they know what they're getting into. You just have to have a sign saying it's extremely long, long wait, six hours, seven hours, and people can make that decision. Let them make the decision. And I understand that when that happens, that you know Universal Studios and the media, they're going to probably come at you for a little bit, but just take it on the chin. It's called the sunken fallacy. Do you know what the sunken fallacy is? It's when you're digging a hole and you keep digging it and you keep digging it and you keep getting it because you know there's got to be treasure down there somewhere. But so you don't want to quit, but you're just wasting your time. We're wasting our time with these boarding groups. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Quit chasing the sunken fallacy. Quit chasing your losses. Just get rid of it. And here's what you do is you make fun of, if you're worried about Universe Studios, because Universe Studios might come at you guys because they're kind of snarky and fun, but that's that's kind of their that's kind of their thing. Here's the thing about Universal Studios, you guys have to realize, their park attendance is going up. People are loving it. In fact, it's going up so high that they're building a whole new theme park. Epic Universe is going to be built. Disney, you have to compete with this. You have to, you have to. And if you don't, you're going to lose this race because I'm just, I'm frustrated. I am frustrated because I know when Tiana's Bayou Adventure, there's so many people are gonna wanna go. And if you do boarding groups, Disney, I can tell you what's gonna happen right now. I'm predicting it. If you make people do boarding groups, guess what's gonna happen? You're gonna repeat history. Their attendance is going to go down just like it did at Galaxy's Edge. Because if you tell people, you can't ride this attraction, why would I spend my money to go there? I'm gonna wait until you allow me to go on that attraction. When you allow me to go on that attraction, then I will spend my money, money as a family and I will go to that attraction. But if you tell me I've spent my thousands of dollars and I get here and I can't ride it because I don't have a boarding pass and my daughter's looking at it, my son's looking at it, everybody's looking at it, they're like, Dad, can we ride this ride? And I'm like, uh, no, I don't have a reservation, didn't get one. <laughs> That's a bad experience. And we do better than that. We do better than that. Okay, I know this is my opinion. I, this is just my opinion on this. But that, in my mind, is exactly what's happened with Disney with the, the whole experience is because of that interview that Bob Chapik gave in 2019 before Rise of the Resistance opened. Disney didn't want to look bad. They had to back that up. Uh, he said 10-hour wait. It was a failure. It was a failure. If you agree with this, please share this video. The more people watch this video, maybe Disney will see it. Maybe it'll do something. I don't know, but share this video if you agree with it. If you don't agree and you think I'm off base, Put it down in the comments down below. Tell me why. I would love to hear your explanation of, of what you think is going on. I love, I love to read those comments. All right, all right, all right. Oh, by the way, we got a whole bunch of brand new videos coming out. And if you go to our community tab, we're asking you all kinds of questions. Put your comments in there. But be warned, if you put a comment in there, we might read your name on screen because the next couple of videos will be super funny. It's all you guys' comments. You guys are the best. You guys are awesome. And I just need you guys to know that. All right, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. 10 hours isn't a failure, it's frankly a success. That means you have a product that everybody wants to have. Why would you think that's bad? That's a really good thing. Let people try the product that you created that everybody wants. 10 hours, 10 hours, so what?